Give me a little intro there, Gomer. You're listening to the Station 71 podcast. My name is Mario, and this week I'm joined by my co-hosts, Beth and Brian. So uh, we're kind of winging this fun topic that we have this week, (laughs) but we're doing a design of festival. Uh, I think this discussion came up when we were talking about Epcot festivals and like how it's kind of year round and whatnot. Um, We have some very loose guidelines here that I don't think all of us followed, including myself. (laughs) So they're not rules, they're guidelines. Uh, But first, let's dive into our news discussion this week. Um, So I have three news topics here that we can talk about. First one is that the uh, Disney in-room bath products provider H2O Plus announces closure of business, which means that they will no longer be stocking this specific brand in their... Uh, hotel rooms and they will be ceasing to uh, distribute h2o plus anybody think disney's gonna buy them specifically like the rights to their smells and they're gonna release them as not h2o plus i kind (laughs) of hope they don't i kind of hope that they just come up with their own smells because that sea marine stuff is nasty like if they go back to the, the orange blossom or whatever and they pick up like some of the other scents and put them in room then i'd be fine with it but otherwise i kind of hope they just go their own way yeah i'm kind of curious to see if they hook up with kind of like a a company they're already somewhat working like i like my first thought was basin i don't know if they are if they would be able to really like supply this kind of stuff you know on the scale that disney needs it but that's another, you know, company that already kind of works with Disney. They have a place at Disney Springs, and they have a ton of different scents. So, yeah, I think that would be cool. cool because they could. I feel like they could do a lot of different ones for different resorts, and that kind of become a more, you know, unique special thing to each resort we did. I Didn't like they that. used to do that? Like, wasn't it originally like the orange scent was only like the deluxe resorts, and then there was a different for moderates and a different for values? I feel or am like I that was imagining the, that. I feel like that was the case. I don't. I can't. I don't remember if it absolutely was, but I feel like it. It had to be something similar to that. I feel like there definitely used to be like specific ones for specific resorts, like. Right. I want to say like contemporary had like a special one that you only got if you stayed there or something like that. And I think that that's a really cool concept just because it's like, I don't know, scent is so strongly tied to memory that unfortunately, every time I smell sea marine, I think about Port Orleans because that was the first time that I stayed at a Disney resort (laughs) and used the product. But it would be cool to have that kind of scent memory tied to like a specific place and it'd be a good scent. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, the sea marine is so not It's just good. a weird and smell. Like it's like almost. It kind of like, smells like a swamp. Just, it's almost <laughs> not bad, but it is. It, right. You could see what they were trying to do, but they failed. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. I think it'd be cool if they if they switched it up. I'm just kind of surprised too that a company that gets what I have to imagine is a pretty lucrative deal with Disney to produce all of this product for multiple resorts at multiple locations. Like that seems like in itself enough to keep you going. Yeah, but also think about the fact that they only probably have a deal with Disney. Like, that's got to be the biggest killer, is that they really probably aren't doing business with anybody besides them, and they probably have something strictly in their um, their business agreement that they don't do business with anybody besides them. That's a good point. 
You know, we yeah. probably all could have seen this coming when they started locking up the shampoo and stuff. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, realistically, other than Disney purchasing their products for like the in-room showers, like the only other place they really sell them is in the gift shops and stuff. And if you're not using the product in the shower, why would you go and buy some random scent that you don't know what it smells like in the yeah. gift shop? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like they, I've right. seen them in the gift shop, like different scents, like other than the sea marine or whatever, like scents that sound like they would smell good, but you can't smell them because they're all packaged up. It's like, why am I going to buy something? I don't even know what it's like. Yeah, I don't know. But like you said, I think we all could have seen this coming when they started to lock up the, yeah. the stuff in the gift shop. Can we talk for a second? I know this is like it's on topic, but a little off topic. Have y'all ever seen those people online who have literal like drawers full of the miniatures? And I'm like, what is wrong with you people? Why? Like they have literally, and I, I'm like, I get it. I like to take the little miniatures from the hotel too. But I've seen people with like Tupperware bins full of them online posting about how look at my stash and i'm just like first of all how many times do you go to disney and second of all why would you keep every single one what are you like using them in the shower you just like you get one handful of shampoo every time you take a shower sorry i just needed to get that off my chest no it's totally fine because i have seen those people uh i feel like not that I am one of those people, but I have so much of that stuff at home. It makes it sense better. I might too, but well, not even like buying it. Like I've brought stuff like that home because I, you have it in the hotel room, and we almost never use it. But I like the smell of it, and we've brought it home, and it just sits there. But like, not that much. That's excessive. Yeah. I and it used know. to be cuter when they had little Mickey ear tops on them too. Yeah. Now it's just like regular, like plain Jane, regular hotel bottles. Lame. 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 <laughs> <laughs> um. So our next topic here is that Disney has resumed casting for the Green Army Men Drum Corps ahead of their return to Hollywood Studios. So it looks like originally they were casting them back in April, but postponed it a couple days later. Looks like that listing is back up, which could potentially mean that we are getting the Green Army Men back at Toy Story Land. Um, I think Nature is healing. Right. Like <laughs> 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 We're getting the live entertainment back. Everything is right with the world. Finally. It's definitely good to, to hear and see that this is happening. It's also weird to think that it's kind of like, you know, we're still not fully recovered yet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was thinking about that the other day, and I guess this is, it's not really off topic again, but when do you guys think that, like, we'll actually see a return to form for Disney for this kind of stuff? Do you think it's like, we'll actually see some of these things come back soon? Or do you think it's like a, we're facing a new normal with Disney where a lot of this stuff doesn't come back? I I think that... I hope I'm wrong, but I think that this is kind of the new normal. I think that Disney kind of is going to use COVID as an opportunity to, I don't want to say trim the fat, but that's kind of what I feel like Disney thinks about a lot of the live entertainment stuff. And a lot, you know, the average guest probably doesn't care that much about the live entertainment. Um, You know, I mean, I love it, obviously, but if Disney says, oh, hey, look, you know, we were able to cut costs, get rid of a lot of this probably, you know, somewhat expensive live entertainment to hire, you know, the performers, and we're still not seeing attendance decreases, then why not just keep not having them? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, like a lot of companies, Disney has definitely used COVID as an excuse to cut things they were probably already thinking about cutting. And then they have this reason that they're like, oh, this is why. And we're just never going to bring it back. Yeah. (laughs) But it's good to see some of the stuff coming back. Right. Speaking Um, of stuff coming back. (laughs) 
Uh, yeah. Speaking of stuff coming back, um, we have three more backstage tours returning in Epcot in October, which is exciting. I don't think we talked about the fact that some of them were coming back already, but it looks like the three that we're getting back are uh, the, why is this not loading? Uh, Behind the Seeds, which we've talked about before, um, Dive Quest, and the Dolphins in the Depths uh, at the Seas. So. Now this is nature healing, specifically Behind the Seeds coming back. Yeah. I have been wanting to do it again since I did it the first time, and it, shortly after I did it was COVID, so it, it's exciting that I'll get to do it again next time. Yeah, it's I am very excited for this to come back. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> like we said before, it's just such a good deal. And mm-hmm. it really is. It's also kind of one of the only that I can think of experiences like this where it's like, oh, do you like this attraction? Do you really like this attraction? dollars <laughs> <laughs> to get to see even more what's going on in this attraction. You know, so yeah, yeah, and unlike a lot of the tours, I know we've said this before, but unlike a lot of the tours, it isn't a huge time like kill like take take, it doesn't take a whole lot of time out of your day. It's like a nice little added bonus. It's like you know an hour and change. You Mm -hmm. get this cool, unique experience, and not super expensive, and you still have plenty of time to do other things throughout the day. Right. You know, and I think that Disney would do good to have more stuff like that that isn't this huge time commitment thing. Mm-hmm. You know, I you know, I mean, and, and even some of the other stuff at Epcot is nice. I don't know, necessarily know how long they take, but it's also probably the type of thing that you're going to plan your entire day around. You know, like if you've signed up to do Dive Quest, I imagine that that's going to kind of be like, the big thing that you do that day there's not a whole yeah. lot of it, like or and it's also something that you definitely need to plan in advance you know whereas behind the scenes you can very easily just kind of like stumble upon it and decide to do it while you're there one day right yeah especially things like dive quest and dolphins in depth it's like I think when I did Dive Quest, the whole experience like from start to finish the like backstage tour and the getting dressed into your like shorty suit or whatever and then actually being underwater was maybe two or three hours but then you also like have to shower afterwards (laughs) because (laughs) you have been in like immersed in a tank and so then it's just like all right well I guess I could shower and continue to go about my day or I could just you know go home go back to the resort but yeah and then the other tours I feel like even the ones where you don't get into a body of water it's like three five hour even more on some of the more expensive ones it's just like your entire day basically so yeah i agree i would like to see more shorter experiences like this come around and plus you know if i drop 200 plus dollars on one of these experiences i'm definitely going cheap the rest of the day on everything else yeah yeah that's also true because they are they some of them aren't cheap i mean Mm -hmm. (laughs) <laughs> now i will say that when i did dive quest i don't know if this is still true you could get like you could come in without an epcot ticket but you had to leave afterwards obviously so you did it wasn't like you had to pay for a park ticket and then also pay the 219 dollars. Okay. it was yeah which we didn't know that so like i had an annual pass it didn't matter but everyone else in my party my dad and Laz bought Epcot tickets so whoops but yeah back back then you didn't have to spend the extra hundred dollars for no reason Mm -hmm. we did end up taking a shower and like walking around a little bit more but so it was it ended up being like not total waste but yeah but I I think a lot of the other tours you do have to have park admission like especially like keys of the kingdom because they take you to the parade and then they just let you go but they will like actually walk you out of Epcot if you don't want to buy a ticket at least back then in dive quest i can't imagine that now you don't have to have a ticket i feel like that's 
the world of Disney we live in. Yeah. Now. <laughs> yeah, that might have been a time and place kind of thing before yeah. before the paycheck took over. Before the paycheck took over. Uh well, speaking of uh the paycheck, uh our <laughs> our topic this week is that we've been hired by Disney Imagineering to design an Epcot festival. <laughs> Um, We're all about to get fired. Yeah, I think we are all about <laughs> to get fired for this one. We had some like loose-ish guidelines that, honestly, I don't know what we were thinking when we came up with them because, in retrospect, it was a lot harder than we actually <laughs> we had mm-hmm. accounted for here. Uh, so our original idea was you were going to design a festival, give an overall theme, have two to three forms of entertainment, which, insane. Uh one kiosk with food item dessert and one drink and then bonus points for merch um it kind of makes you appreciate the people that actually do design the festivals though because they had to do all of this plus like you know 13 kiosks we couldn't even do Mm -hmm. a little portion of it yeah i mean it definitely made me appreciate that um Does but anybody... then again, they're also paid for it, and we aren't. So right. Um, does anybody want to go first? <laughs> well, I can go first under the condition that if anything pops out in your guys' heads, feel free to contribute. Because yeah, I actually mine, think this mine's is kind of on the nose. I think ours is going to be like all of these are going to be better collaboratively. Like <laughs> once we start discussing them, I'm sure something's going to come out. So, like I said, mine is kind of on the nose. I thought it'd be kind of fun to do just generic festivals of the world, and <laughs> in each country, find something that that country is like exclusive to them to celebrate. Like uh, the obvious answer would be Dia de los Muertos in Mexico. And you have that whole pavilion decorated as if it were Dia de los Muertos. Then, like, for China, you have Chinese New Year. Obviously, we got to have Fourth of July in the United States, because what else do we do here that's, like, unique to us, I guess? Yeah. Um, And then, you know, just go around other little, like, other countries and figure out what their little festivals are. And then kind of in the in-between areas or... You know, off to the side, you could have some that aren't actual pavilions. Like, I thought it'd be really cool to have some way to do the Festival of Colors that they do in India, where they throw, like, the yeah. the paint powder. Maybe not at each other, because nobody's going to want to do that on their Disney day. But maybe, like, similar to the Paint by Numbers mural that they do at Festival of the Arts, they could have, like, a canvas that everybody gets to throw a little bit of that powder at or something. I like it. Yeah, I like that too. You, you see kind of some of the elements of, of, you know, like the the De Los Muertos stuff in the pavilion already, but to it would be cool for each country to kind of like get free reign to expand on that more instead mm-hmm. of being kind of like a small part of, of the pavilion. Yeah. And like do stuff that you would actually see, you know, they... I would love if they did a small kind of like parade or something, you know, in each one or something just so that it wouldn't kind of be like, oh, hey, you know, here's here's the merch you can buy. Actually make it a learning experience. Yeah, definitely. I think that would also satisfy the um, <clears throat> that. I guess lack of more modern edutainment in Epcot too, right? Because we've lost a little bit of the cultural experience with Epcot that was there before. And I think that having stuff like that would be neat to at least bring it back for maybe a couple months out of the year to really satisfy the people that want it back. Mm -hmm. And, you know, especially I think not only has Epcot as kind of a whole gotten away from that, but especially when the festivals are there i feel like that's when epcot is at its furthest from edutainment yeah yeah so it would definitely be nice to have something that's focused on getting back to that yeah i i do kind of miss the the edutainment of epcot as a whole and i 
I appreciate them trying a little bit here and there within some of the festivals. I feel like specifically Festival of the Arts is probably the most like edutainment-ish type of one because they have like, I don't know, I guess it's not really edutainment. It's just like cultural feel, more cultural feeling because they do have like performers and artists and, you know, different kind of stuff around the parks that isn't just food and drinks and you know on cute plates um and then you know a little bit of flower and garden they have like the displays that are like hey here's how the plants were grown or this type like information about these types of plants but yeah I feel like this could be a really good opportunity for them to really embrace that and like you guys said just enough time to satisfy us that want that type of thing back I do think that that's like your your comment on it being a little on the nose is kind of an, also a testament to how hard it would be to come up with something. And I think, you know, we mentioned it earlier that like this assignment really did kind of make me appreciate what is at Epcot in terms of festivals a little more. Like, I know I'm a little quick to jump and say like, hey, uh, you know, we do food and wine for how many months out of the year? But in thinking about it, I was like, wow, this there's really a lot that you can do, but also a lot of it is stuff that they do and they jam into these festivals. Mm-hmm. Um, like my, my initial thought, and I, it was, this is going to be so typically on brand for me was I was like, they should really do like a better holiday festival. Yeah. And like mm-hmm. I feel like festival of the holidays is it's there, but it's not like, it's not what I want. And, I feel like it's just every country's version of Santa, pretty much. Yeah, like, I want to know, I, I know we did an episode on, like, the holiday traditions, and you could really expand it instead of it being just, like, Christmas. I, I'm kind of moving off of your topic. I'm sorry, Beth. No, that's um, okay. But, like, the the thought that I had when I was initially thinking about this, like, this isn't the one I landed on. The one I landed on is a little bit more funny, and it's not as serious, um, which I know you guys are going to laugh when I, I say what it is, but... This one, like when I was thinking about holidays and like why that's the perfect fit for an Epcot festival, like I know we went back and we did that episode a couple of years ago where we did like holidays around the world and we talked about like the different traditions that they have and how some of some of the countries that are in World Showcase celebrate like New Year's more than Christmas. And I think that the time frame that they do festivals really kind of lends itself to something like that where, you know, we celebrate Christmas at a specific time, but like, you know, China is more about the Chinese New Year, and like you know, you can you can expand the the thought of a holiday festival across several months and really do a lot more with it. Mm-hmm. I don't know. That was my initial thought, but obviously we have that, so it doesn't really help. We could just replace Festival of the Holidays with my version of Festival of the Holidays, and it's not just the holiday of Christmas time it's right. all the holidays yeah i Good think that'd be a lot i think that'd be a lot more fun and i don't know i feel like people go during christmas and they want to see christmas lights it's like go to magic kingdom yeah right. i mean they are all about that there that's what it's about i'm dying to know yours now <laughs> so I spent the longest time trying to come up with a really good answer. And I was trying to, my, my thought process for what can we do to link the countries and world showcase together under a festival umbrella. And what can we do to really um, like make sure that this, this has that Epcot spirit in it. Um, And I was trying so hard to tie stuff together and it, it took me so long to figure something out. And my initial thought was, why don't we do a cheese and wine festival at Epcot, which is kind of food and wine. Yes. But more focus on like the different cheeses around the world. (laughs) But I was thinking more like, I mean, I'm in, I love cheese and cheese. Specific focus on the cheese, like the different cheeses around the world. And like, you can make them into different dishes. It also sounds awful in the hot Florida sun, but we're not here to talk about that because I'm not an Imagineer. (laughs) Do it in the winter when it's not so hot. Yeah. And I mean, honestly, like there's so many different foods that you can make with different cheeses. You could even do like different samples and things. And my one thought was that it would be really cool to do like booths around the world that do like different samples of different things. And I, again, didn't come up with a food item because we, we loose 
uh, loosely played this one. But I was thinking like overall you have these different places that are trying to like show you how, you know, you can incorporate the different cheeses that are specifically made in different countries and, you know, maybe import some of that stuff over. But then like, you know, how they have the festival booth in um, that uh, the pavilion in Epcot that's mostly used for like banquets and stuff like that, that big hall building. Um, Mm -hmm. They could have like a cheese board room in there where you can get like a little you know, sample of a bunch of different things and like, Harcucci. yeah, basically a big charcuterie <laughs> board in that <Harcucci>. building. <laughs> so that was my thought initially. I love it. My stomach hurts just thinking about it. <laughs> Absolutely. Like <laughs> on paper, it's great. Like the thought is there, but in practice, it would be the worst decision they could make mm-hmm. for an Epcot festival. <laughs> Oh, I would love it, and I would eat all the cheeses, and I would hate myself afterwards, but it would be worth it. A hundred percent. And I also think that you could make some really cute merch themed around it. I don't have any specific ideas, but I'm sure Disney could give me some cute cheese merch. Yeah, and with Remy's Ratatouille Adventure, just stick Remy all over everything like they do with food and wine. (laughs) So basically food and wine, too. Yes, cheese and wine. I like it. Nice. <laughs> Remy's Ratatouille Cheese and Wine Festival. Nice. I, I also had like a side thought while we were talking about this. What if they did like an after hours festival at Epcot that was dedicated solely to like not drinking around the world, but like specialty cocktails around the world that weren't like world showcase focused? That would be pretty cool. They would yes. Oh, they absolutely I would, would pay absurd amounts of money to be at Epcot with exclusively adults drinking well, and alcohol. Like, even if it was, I, I the funny thing about that is, I think that they could do it in a way that specifically kept open just World Showcase. Um, only had like the the you know drink booths around the world and and different things like that, but do it in a way that like is in. Like it's going to detract people, not detract people from drinking during the daytime, but it's going to move a lot of those people during the day hours to this like after hours event by doing like limited edition things like special drinks that you can get after hours or I mean, I guess merch too, because people flock for special edition merch, but that would be pretty cool. Yeah. Now we're yeah, designing after that. hours parties and I think that's a different topic. <laughs> I love that. I mean, they've done it before, like. The villains after hours thing that was like, you know, you pay a certain amount of money and you get to eat and drink as much as you want. You can do it. It's possible. (laughs) Just make it make it 21 up. And that sounds like a perfect festival to me. Yeah, honestly, I'm surprised they haven't done like a, a adults only after hours party like that for. Um, especially if they did it like late at night when kids aren't even going to be awake anyway yeah like that's just free money although you know there were days where you didn't have to pay extra to stay in the parks till like midnight (laughs) (laughs) those days are gone those days are long gone (laughs) So what about you, Brian? Did you come up with a festival? I did. And this one might not appeal to much uh, many other people besides myself, but I think a lot of the pavilions kind of focus on the man-made aspects of the different countries. And I thought that it would be really cool to have a festival that would focus on the natural wonders that each Uh, pavilions country has and i Mm. think that it would be really cool and this is that would be cool it's gonna really care that much but i think it would be really cool that each country would build like a scale diorama of some of the like natural wonders of their country and have people come in to talk about it and um like we said earlier about a lot of epcot and the uh the festivals especially getting away from edutainment i think this would be a really good chance to kind of bring that back yeah i like that that would be really cool and, and course, canada wouldn't even have to build one they already got one right. they are yeah it's not yeah a scale model it's just like a full scale <laughs> yeah 
Um, <laughs> I think that, you know, aside from that, it would be pretty easy to just like steam food after each of the things. So you could still have food and drink booths for each of them. Um, but yeah, I, I just, I don't know. I, I look in, in, you know, like you're saying, other than Canada, it obviously has it. Not many of the countries like showcase any kind of like nature that their country has. Mm-hmm. So, they are. And any chance that we can get more dioramas, I'm, I'm, I'm down for. Yeah, that would, that be, would be neat. Cool. And like, God. I was just gonna say, I love looking at like models of stuff anyway. So this sounds like right up my alley. Yeah, I I was just thinking like there's a lot that they could really do with that, even for temporary structures. Like if they did, um, like miniature scale models of stuff, like that would be neat too. Mm-hmm. This also got me looking into some of like what different countries like places they have to visit like natural wonders are and some of these places are playing it like fast and loose with the safety aspects to some of these places you can go see there was one i was looking at in norway that was really cool it was like this it's this sheer cliff that like hangs over it this huge drop off into one of the biggest lakes that they have there and it's a natural park and there's people just like dangling off the edge of this thing, which I'm oh. just like getting sweaty <laughs> palms just looking at the picture. I know. That just increased my heart rate a little <laughs> bit. Yeah. See, we can't have these things in America if we're not <laughs> as smart as them. <laughs> I was also thinking while we were talking about that, Brian's actually kind of triggered a, an idea in my head. What if they did like an international uh, festival, but like a science fair type of deal where they did like each country's contributions to just like discovery and science? I think that would also kind of feed into the edutainment parts of Epcot and they could they could do a lot of like cool little things with um, even just like temporary booths that you could walk through and, and see like little exhibits for. That would be neat. That's actually kind of similar to the other one Ooh. I had. Um, I guess I can just go ahead and do mine. I'll just do it Absolutely. Before. I had nothing else for that, but if you've got more, then I'm intrigued. Well, okay. So this one, I, I, all of these I come up with like a name or something first. And <laughs> it. Um, it, was, it was Epcot's uh, Futures Past Celebration. And I thought it would be cool for each country to pick like a really substantial time period of their country. So if it was, you know, oh. a time that they developed something very important technologically or socially or something like that, and that they would focus on that. And then you could have all the cast members dress specifically um, from that time period and then obviously have, you know, booths or other entertainment places set up to kind of discuss what that was or if it was a technology to have that on showcase there for people to see and explain how it works um but yeah i like it i like that a lot actually it feels like a little bit we're uh trying to bring interventions back in a way <laughs> kind of does but, how cool would that be though if we had an intervention style building and you could do something like that in there Maybe yeah i would that would anyway. be amazing <laughs> you mean like interventions yeah yeah exactly <laughs> you mean like they could just do that now <laughs> <laughs> uh, how cool would it be if it's a very possible thing that they could do they just did <laughs> This very possible <laughs> thing that probably wouldn't cost that much money and would be a lot of fun. Imagine if they just did that. Yeah. It's, it's already gone now, so the, the money's already allocated elsewhere, unfortunately. You gotta have things that people can walk by as they walk to World Showcase, you know, instead of things that people want to stop at.
yeah i don't know i i wish we did have that back <laughs> all right and honestly if they could make like again this is way off of the topic of like designing a festival which i feel like we kind of blew through um <laughs> if they kept something like interventions around and just like updated it regularly which is a lot to ask for disney mm-hmm. um i think it wouldn't have aged as poorly as it did that's kind of just the theme of disney in general yeah that's fair um did we have any like specific entertainment options in mind for any of these well i feel like mine would be easy because you just get like you know in china you get those people in like the lion costume Mm. or the dragon costume they think they have a lion and a dragon like different times of year maybe they have like i saw this video and it was like this incredibly elaborate dance that these people do where they're like in costume and they're like jumping over each other and behind and beside. And if they did something like that, which is totally possible because they already have the acrobats that are absolutely mind boggling at times. Yeah. That would be cool. What do Canadians celebrate? What would their festival be? Canada day. That's my (laughs) birthday. Fun fact. What what is that the celebration of? Is that like the founding of Canada? Oh, we're just making all of our Canadian listeners angry at this. I'm sorry, Canadian listeners. I would love for you to email us and tell us your experience. If Canada Day is like a thing I mean, you actually well, get we, like, stoked well, about, that would be fun. We need edutainment because we do not know. That's it. Right. We exactly. Are to learn. We are proving <laughs> the point here. It celebrates I mean, the anniversary of Canadian Confederation, which were the three separate colonies of the United Canada's Nova Scotia and New Brunswick were united into a single dominion within the British Empire called Canada. I didn't know that United Canada's was a thing. See, this is why we need it. Shout out to Vanessa and apologies for uh, the advanced, you know, (laughs) disrespect of your culture. I'm sorry. Yes. And I think this is a really good time to throw our Google number out there. (laughs) The Google number that I'm pretty sure is expired at this point. Okay. Well, we're going to come up with a new Google number and we want you guys to call in and leave us voicemails that we can play on this show telling us. All about why we're ignorant Americans and we need to know more about your country. I'm not kidding. This is uh, this is exactly what Brian said. This is why we need edutainment because um, we don't know it. I just reactivated our Google Voice number, uh, which has a million spam calls. So (laughs) great. Uh, Our Google Voice number is. Oh, hold on. Never mind, it has to regenerate. Uh, Why okay. are you doing that? I don't know how it is above the Mason Dixon line, Mario, but um, <laughs> in the South, we, I, man, like all of our history, I feel like growing up was very US centric. Oh, it absolutely yeah. is. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, it's everywhere. Even and- the history was like, Here's when America was, you know, here's what we were dealing with in the world at certain times from the right point of view. And I definitely know that being in like the the proper South and and maybe you can feel me on this, Brian, because Florida doesn't really count as Southern. I'm sorry. No, but my education. was. But you are from Georgia, so you will understand that. I feel like I learned a lot about the civil war and a lot about the revolutionary war and that's pretty much the extent of the history i learned (laughs) yep for sure yeah if if i knew we were going to take this turn i would have i would have tried to ping vanessa earlier and see if she could have jumped on i know um it just it really is mind-boggling how how america-centric i feel like our 
history classes are and you know like I said I'm only speaking from my own personal experience here but like I had a friend that was from England and he knew so much more about America than I did in addition to all the other important points in history in the world and I'm just like okay okay got it I'm ignorant <laughs> <laughs> So we have a Google number for people uh, to yell at us. I'm trying to figure that out in a way that I can not link it to my cell phone. So okay. let, me, let me figure this out. I'll plug it at the end of the episode. You don't want people to have your personal <laughs> cell phone number. I do not want people. So Google Voice, again, this is me just uh, being way off topic here. Uh, Google Voice apparently now makes you link your phone number to the number that you're like setting up so i can plug the number on this podcast people can call it but then it'll go to my cell phone they won't have my actual cell phone number but they'll have a line to me and i don't like that mm. especially gotcha. if you're asking them to tell us that we're wrong i don't want to answer those phone calls well i don't answer any phone calls if i don't know the number that's what the voicemail's for so i might be willing to let that happen and i also already get like a million spam calls a day so my number is already dead i found what i think is another site that'll let me set up a voicemail box so we'll see um but yeah while you're doing that we can talk about (laughs) some other countries celebrations that sounds good um so we got saint olaf's day in norway he was the, the patron saint of norway and apparently this festival has been celebrated for over 900 years. So there's that. How is it celebrated, you ask? Well, I'll tell you. Well, before you go into that, <laughs> we can't do a St. Olaf's Day in Disney. That's not going to happen because yeah. Disney is absolutely going to just bring Josh Gad out of the basement for that one. <laughs> so. Let him come out of the basement for a little bit. <laughs> they, could play, they could just weave that right in. And you know what? Disney also owned ABC, which was the host of the Golden Girls, and that, you know, Rose from Golden Girls was from St. Olaf. Her family's from St. Olaf. They could bring that back. You know, you can make it a whole IP festival. That's really what we should have done. That's the most I, common denominator of what oh gosh. they actually do is an IP festival. We could so easily play in that, like right now. <laughs> yeah, literally just boom, boom, boom. Just throw all of the Disney characters, take every Disney character within history and shove them in the pavilion. Honestly, that though, in. I thought I was just about to say, like, I, you could really very easily do that. And I hate that that's an idea that I'm now thinking about because it wouldn't be hard at all. Um, it would just be really far away from all the good that we did with our festival's edutainment aspect. Well, here's a funny thought. Um, which country would be the hardest to put an IP in? I mean, I would have said Norway before, but they just jammed Frozen in there. I think Morocco now, right? Canada? What would go in Canada? Morocco, you could do Aladdin because they do already. Even though that's not really right. It's like Norway and Frozen. Morocco and Aladdin. Yeah, I can't think of anything Canada specific. Um, We don't have anything Japan either, do we? Disney doesn't have any Japanese. Big Hero 6. Oh, well... Well, that's not technically... That's San Francisco. Yeah. yeah, but they're going to shove it in there. It's Disney. Yeah, Come they, they, could, they if, could definitely... If Aladdin it. goes in Morocco, Big Hero 6 goes in Japan. Yeah. Um, I mean, you could technically shove Brother Bear in Canada, but that's Pacific Northwest, according to Google. And, I mean, I guess technically... Yeah, I don't know. 
I mean, that would, like be, that would be an interesting thing. one that we never see anything That's about. That's like the, the closest thing. I googled Canadian Disney movies, and honestly, the first thing that popped up was Snow Dogs, but I don't think they're going to go with that. <laughs> cool Runnings was second, and then followed by The Princess Bride, but I don't see the connection there. I'm sorry. <laughs> cool run- Why? Just because the Olympics were held in Canada in the movie? <laughs> Oh, but here's where it gets weird. Um, we have Phantom Menace, Attack of the Clones, A New Hope, and then Revenge of the Sith. Like those four Star Wars movies are apparently Canadian, and then it's followed by Mulan. So I think we're really stretching it here. But okay, were parts of the part, Star Wars movies filmed in Canada? I don't understand the connection at all. Possibly, there. but my favorite part of this is that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10 the 11th movie on this list is my favorite disney movie of all time and that's die hard because (laughs) apparently that's a christmas movie it's a disney movie um we have followed by that beauty and the beast pretty woman cadet kelly and then predator i okay this is obviously a very like not reputable source that you're using here i think we should move away from it (laughs) <laughs> let's go back to I, brother bear because that's the only one that made sense uh, even <laughs> a little bit i am sending this to you guys so that i have proof that i googled canadian disney movies and this is what came up <laughs> but yeah i don't know what else you would put in there besides maybe brother bear that's like the one that i feel like kind of sh- stretches it a little bit Well, you know what? Let's petition for a Canadian Disney princess. Because that's what we really need. Is a Disney princess who's like nice and has government paid health (laughs) care. You know what? Thinking about (laughs) like Disney movies has led me to this point of thinking like I know Brian said like a, a um like a national parks and like national um like natural things um but what if they like sponsored with nat or pro- partnered with uh a company that they own nat geo and did something along those lines oh. like that mm-hmm. feels like it shouldn't be as much of a reach as it actually is yeah yeah it could be like a even a, a film possibly yeah country with some info about it uh, like in those theaters that are perhaps sh- circle shaped. Hmm. <laughs> nice <idea. Good> <laughs> <laughs> Might be able to kick the uh, Beauty and the Beast sing along out for a little bit. God, please, can we? What about Italy? In terms of Disney movies or Yeah. Um What IP are we gonna shove in there? Um Lady of the Tramp. Yeah. <laughs> shove Tony's in there. Oh, that one's easy, Luca. Yeah. Oh duh. I'm sorry. I forgot about that movie. It was fine. It was fine. I googled Italian Disney movies, and Google for this one was a little bit more reputable. Um, but if uh, mm, never mind, I lost my trust here. Uh, it says popular Disney movie set in Italy. We have Luca, Onward, Good Dinosaur. Um, Onward, that's canon <laughs> set in Italy. Okay. Disney's children movie set in Italy. Up, Cars two, and Cinderella, like the live action one. Um. But then Disney movies, Disney magic movies set in Italy. We have Snow White, Sleeping Beauty, Sword in the Stone, and Cinderella, which I, I don't I, think that's correct. I don't yeah, think definitely not. Correct. I'm pretty sure some of those are England, aren't they? Well, I thought that Snow White is German. Yeah, well, Snow White's definitely German. All, like Grim based. Sword in the Stone is England, right? Yeah. yeah. Sword in the Stone is definitely England. Where's Sleeping Beauty set? France? I feel like France sounds about right. Somewhere European. Google says France. But not Italy. Ah. So, uh, France 
is home of Cinderella, Beauty and the Beast, Sleeping Beauty, Aristocats, and The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Okay. Pinocchio is also Italy. So that's right. Yeah. Yeah. It's been oh, so long since I've seen that yeah, movie. That's right. Pinocchio would be cool to see as like a, a limited time Disney festival thing. I mean, I feel like now we're just designing topiaries for flower and garden, aren't we? <laughs> now, Cars 2, part of it does take place in Italy. Does it really? Yeah, because they go like all these different European countries for the races. Oh, gosh. You know what? Why don't we just put out, instead of uh, doing festivals, we'll just roll out a giant racetrack around World Showcase, and we'll just do whatever the the Piston Cup, is that what it was for Cars? We'll just do that for like two months. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is truly going off the rails. <laughs> well, that is our specialty. Yeah, it absolutely is. I honestly, I've run out of ideas at this point. If we just want to call it a short week. Oh, oh part. Okay. No, y'all, this is actually, this is what we're oh, doing. No. We are doing a racetrack around World Showcase. Oh, no. And we're going through all these different parts. Literally, the whole just Cars 2 plot, you could just do a ride. <laughs> because it goes to Tokyo. And then they go to Italy. No, then they go to Paris. Then they go to Italy. Then they go to London. <laughs> this like the whole, It's all World Showcase, basically. That's half the that's half the pavilions right there. And there's an animatronic mater in every country. <laughs> yes. I hate and all it he does here. Is say, yeah, cool. I'm in in an insert whatever country he's in. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, let's just take Epcot and retheme the entire park to cars. Nice. Yeah. Um, let's just throw it in the trash and start over and make it all cars. You know, I, I that's good. Cool. Okay, I, that's that's good, but I feel like it's a little bit too broad. I think it should specifically be Cars Two theme. Okay, I hate all of this, and I hope you all know it. Um, specifically do... Cars Two because it did not make sense at all that this took place directly after the first Cars movie. So I, oh no, it didn't send the actual image. I sent it to the group chat, but. Uh, I googled Cars 2 plot because I was trying to follow along with Beth, and this poster from Cars 2 has me not confused, but concerned. Um, the poster says Oktoberfest, like tow truck. Tow yeah, and it's it, it's like the worst pun. I sent it in our Facebook chat because it wouldn't send in the, the podcast uh, Zencaster chat. Um, and yeah, I don't know. There's there's something about this poster that's that's mildly concerning and alarming. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh, there's they made one for every country. I don't like this. I'm telling you, this was the original plan for Epcot's like remodel. Oh no. Uh this one says Kachow, but it's spelled C I A O. Oh my God, Kachow. <laughs> uh, and then this one. Oh my goodness, I'm just gonna send all. Yeah, of these. I need you to send this link where you're getting these. I, Google images. I googled Cars Two plot, and it was like one of the first ones that came up. But I'm gonna send the three that I found. Uh, this one says fuel the love and I'm assuming it's supposed to be France because the Eiffel Tower is in the background. Um, Spies in the sky, which is, oh, I hate this. The future oh, here we go. McQueen of England. McQueen. Here we go. I found one with all of them together. Sending that one to the Facebook chat Wait, now. What is going on with the Russian one? Which one is that one? Oh, th <laughs> um, yeah, I don't understand that at all. And they already used. I don't. If somebody speaks Russian or knows more about Russian than I do, it says Dobro Holz Holz Halovato. 
I don't know what that means. I'm assuming it's a pun again, but they already did the toe pun once. Um. Okay, this it feels means like welcome. Ah. Dobro, I don't know how to say it, but Dobro pose halovat in Russia yeah. just means welcome. But that 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 doesn't make sense for that. There's got to be a reason. For, are we? Why did we turn into the Cars Two podcast? Like, why is this a rabbit hole that we go down all the time? <laughs> as much crap as I talk about the Cars cinematic universe, I low key am thinking about it all the time <laughs> because it's, there's just so, really... so many questions. There's so much I feel like we don't yet know. <laughs> I... So, welcome to uh, Duffy Part Two, and Cars Part like fifty. <laughs> right, it's like same vibe as the Duffy episode. <laughs> oh, there's one for Brazil too. Apparently, that's not on this list of on uh, this site that I'm sending you. That's probably kind of sketchy. It has a link to all of the posters, but I want to know what the translation of this one is supposed to be. The Brazilian, the one from Brazil or the Russian one? The Russian one. I just, the, the thing I just sent in the chat is the actual way you say, supposedly it's on Google translate is how you say welcome. In right, Russian. but I feel like there's got to be like a... It doesn't make sense that it would... The toe at the end. Yeah. Maybe maybe you just say it differently. Maybe we just don't know how to speak Russian. Possibly. It probably has something to do with the actual translation. Um, God, this is... We need to wrap this yeah, up because... we got to go. We've got to go or else we're going to be here for like four <laughs> more hours talking about cars. Like, this is the sign that it is time to sign off. I'm going to go see if there's any updates to the Reddit thread about cars conspiracy <laughs> theories. <laughs> we'll save that for another day. Oh, goodness. I mean, we may actually have a post show if this continues. But but for now, we'll say Das Vidanya. <laughs> uh, all right. <laughs> Shall we stop on that note? Yeah. Yeah, I think we should. Man, that was a train that we just kept riding and riding and we couldn't get off, huh? I we never can. <laughs> yeah. I mean I'm down the uh the Mater memes rabbit hole now because of a link that I followed through one of the poster articles, so I really think I need to just close the internet. <laughs>